Okay, welcome to Monday of Spring Break. Sorry, we've got several people here. Somebody just had to leave to go to work, but we're gonna be talking a little bit about reaction mechanisms this morning. So here we go. Uh, reaction cur reactions occur at a series of steps, wonderful young people. By the way, all of this is in your notes. If you find a page, I can't remember what it is, but it's, I think it's 19 or 20. Yeah, 21, probably good. Okay. So you may want to annotate what you already have. All right, so reaction mechanisms most occur in a series of steps. Most you don't see. The reaction mechanisms in these, uh, reaction mechanism is these series of steps. So when we talk about how a reaction occurs and we talk about something called a mechanism, what we're talking about is the series of steps that cause this reaction to occur. You won't be responsible for knowing these steps, page 21. Page 21 at the bottom is where we begin. You won't be responsible for knowing these steps. Okay, so elementary steps means the intermediate steps. So when we talk in a, in a chemical reaction, we usually talk about the reactants and the products, the final, the beginning and the final. The elementary steps are the small steps between that will then, if we add them together, come up with the reactants and the final products. Does everybody understand that? Okay, uh, elementary steps is a reaction where the rate law can be written from its molecularity. That means the total number of atoms, ions, or molecules that must collide in order to produce a reaction. The chance of having three collide at the same time is not likely. So what does that mean? What is that telling you? Think about collision chemistry. Think about the collisions that we were talking about. What is the probability of three molecules colliding at the same time in the same or in the right orientation to produce a reaction? Think about that, statistics people. What's that probability? Is that probability high or low? It's pretty low. Remember, they have to collide with the right amount of energy. They have to collide in the right orientation and three of them have to collide just right. So if we think about it in terms of that, this makes complete sense. When we start looking at a reaction from its initial reactants and its final products, understanding what's happening is much more complicated than just seeing those things. And so the elementary steps are breaking things down into kind of single things that are going to happen, okay? And then we can use that to determine the rate law or to come up with this idea of a rate law. So look at the steps to determine the overall reaction. Look at the overall order of the reaction. Unimolecular means one species goes to the products. The overall first order rate, Ka. So if something is unimolecular, that means only one of the reactants matters. All of the other ones are zero order. So if there's anything else in this reaction, all of the others are zero order. This is the only one that makes a difference to the overall rate. That is known as unimolecular. Unimene one. Okay, all of this should be in your notes, right? So bimolecular means two different species or two of the same species. So basically we're talking about an overall second order rate. So you can see down here at the bottom that an overall second order rate is determined right here. This can be a second order rate, this can be a second order rate, and this is a second order rate. So that would be bimolecular, that there are two different things or two of the same thing that contribute to the overall order of the reaction. And then termolecular would mean we have three different species that are contributing to the order and it's an overall third rate. So once again, we see here, here, and here where that's happening. So in these kinds of problems, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be given the rate law. So you're going to be given what we see down here at the bottom. You're going to be given the rate laws. You're going to be given a series of elementary steps 
that could be possi a possible mechanism for this. And you're going to have to use that information to determine if that mechanism is correct or not. That's your goal. So there's nothing here that you have to solve other than understanding that we're going to use these elementary steps to determine the order. And this idea that we have this unimolecular, bimolecular, and termolecular. Okay. Again, this is just showing you exactly what we just talked about. Okay. So reaction mechanism. Here we go. So we see in this reaction mechanism we have um, nitrogen dioxide plus another nitrogen dioxide um, for K1. What does K1 mean? What does this mean right here? What does this term mean right here? What does that K1 mean? I'm sorry? First order. Does it mean first order? Is that what that really means? It's the first rate. So for this particular part of the reaction, this is the first rate constant of that reaction. And then K2 would be the second rate constant of that reaction. And you notice that they tell you that the first one is slow and the second one is fast. Sorry, it's, it's doing a little crazy stuff. And then we see the overall reaction. So this is a reaction that we want. The reaction that we want is nitrogen dioxide plus carbon monoxide yields nitrogen monoxide and carbon dioxide. As usual, the rate law was determined experimentally and found to be rate is equal to K N O2 squared. That's second order in NO2, yes? All right, what do you notice? Can you talk to me a little bit about what you notice? Think about the molecular molecularity that we just talked about. The elementary steps, we have two elementary steps. The NO2 plus NO2 yields NO3 plus NO. We have NO3 plus CO yields NO2 and CO2. What do you notice about, about the molecularity and the rate law? Yes. Yes. The two above the line are the elementary steps. The one below the line is the complete reaction. What do you notice about the rate law and the order of the rate law and the elementary steps? Two elementary steps. Okay, so she said two elementary steps, therefore it's second order. Anybody else? Something a little more closely related. What do you notice about the slow step? No CO in it at all. Look at the rate law. Is there any CO in the rate law at all? So what does that tell you about CO in this rate law? What order do you think CO is? Zero, which means as long as it's there, it doesn't matter. So does CO determine this rate? What's the only thing that determines this rate? NO2, okay, so let me go back for just a second. That molecularity that we were talking about is stoichiometrically determined. So the elementary steps can be used using stoichiometry, which we, told, we said rate laws aren't used. Stoichiometry, stoichiometry doesn't, use, doesn't make the rate law. We have to solve for that, right? But in the mechanism, I can verify that a mechanism is true by looking at the stoichiometry of the elementary steps. What do you notice about the stoichiometry of the slow step? Think about the reactants. What do you see in the reactants? So if I had to write a rate law for the slow step, my rate law would be rate is equal to K 
NO2. Yes. And for the second one, my rate law would be something like this. Sorry, it's screaming at me right now. Which one of those two matches the actual rate law that was found experimentally? Speak up. The first one. The slow step. So, unlike the overall reaction, where we cannot use the stoichiometry to predict the rate law, in elementary steps, we can. How do you feel about that? In the overall reaction, we cannot use stoichiometry to determine the rate law. But when we're looking at mechanisms and we have elementary steps, that means steps leading up to the final reaction, the overall reaction, we can. And what have we just seen about that? Can the second rate law actually determine this reaction? Can this rate law determine the reaction? How do you know? God, I feel like I'm talking to a wall right now. Help me out. Where are we lost? Other than it's Monday of a spring break. So I think you're on the right line. The idea here is, is that the slow step is going to determine the rate. Let's think about that for a second. The slowest step of the reaction should determine the rate. Yes? How are we feeling about that? He's doing fine. He's okay. He's going to be real happy in just a little bit. He's going to be real happy in just a little bit, Brooklyn. Okay, so no CO is what some of you said, right? So it must be zero order, which is why you said that, okay? The rate law is based on the slowest step in the reaction. That is known as the rate determining step and is always the case, and is always the case, okay? So to recap, what we've learned so far is that the reaction mechanism can be broken down into elementary steps. And if we look at the stoichiometry of those elementary steps, we can then look at a proposed rate law. And the one of those elementary steps that matches the experimentally determined rate law from our methodology that we've learned in the last couple of days um, should be the slowest step. So. So the sum of the steps must equal the overall balanced equation. So as we said before, this, these two steps must add up after we cancel each other out to equal the final balanced equation. That's this. So if we add these two steps up or the multiple steps up and they don't do that, then this cannot be a potential mechanism. And you need to be able to justify your answer. And that justification is going to say something about the slow step is the stoichiometry of the elementary slow step matches the rate law determined experimentally. And the, so, the steps, the elementary steps add up to give you the correct overall balanced equation. So the slowest step must agree with experimentally proven rate law. The order of the reaction must equal the sum of the coefficients in the rate determining step. So, going back to that last part, is that like whenever we canceled out the line? Yes, so if we look at it, right. So, when we look at this reaction, we have NO2 right here and an NO2 right here, they cancel out. We have NO3 right here and NO3 right here. So, when we add the reaction together, we get this reaction which is what we want to get, okay? 
usually this overall reaction is given first in the question and then you're given the elementary steps and you're asked is this mechanism a possible mechanism for this reaction okay and there are several things you have to check one does the overall reaction give you the overall balanced equation okay two does the slow step which is number four does the slowest step agree with the experimentally proven rate law in other words that's an elementary step does the stoichiometry of that elementary step give you the experimentally determined rate law so when we're looking at mechanisms we're breaking them down into elementary steps those elementary steps the stoichiometry of those elementary steps can give us potential rate laws the slowest of the elementary step should match with the overall rate law that was determined experimentally. So, vocabulary. First piece of vocabulary, intermediate. In this particular case, NO3, nitrogen trioxide, was an intermediate. It pro was produced in reaction one and then consumed in reaction two. It was needed to make the reaction go, but it's not part of the final reaction. So NO3, right here, that's produced in one, and used up in two is called an intermediate. So intermediates are things that are produced in one step, used up in another step, but don't occur in the final reaction. Next, catalyst. NO2, needed for the reaction in experiment one, but is not consumed in experiment two. By definition, this is a catalyst. So we can see that NO2, there are two of them here. One of the NO2s is considered a catalyst because it occurs again. So it, it, it's by definition a catalyst. You need it for the reaction in experiment one, but is not consumed in experiment two. So that's, that means this, okay, I need this, but what's not a reactant in the second step? NO2 is not. Officially, that is a catalyst. And in this case, because it's a catalyst in the same, same phase as all the other things, gaseous phase, it has to be included in the reaction. Okay. No, it never goes away. Never goes away. It's always there. It does not ever get used up in the reaction. The catalyst is a substance that's used to speed up the rate of reaction, but does not get used up in the reaction. Okay? So, here we go. Drawing an energy diagram for a mechanism. So, we have reactants and we have products. This is what we've looked at. Throughout our time, we've looked at the beginning and the end and nothing in the middle. So, we have a fast step that occurs, and it makes intermediates. Then that intermediate comes and occurs and then makes the products. So when we start looking at the reaction, we have different things. So this is one reaction where you have a fast step and slow step, two step. Here's a three step reaction. How do I know? Well, each part of the reaction has to go, has to reach some sort of a peak and has to meet an activation energy step. So we see E is our peak, F is our peak, and G is our peak. So this is a three-step reaction. And we start with A and we go to E that makes B. And then B goes to F and then makes C. And then C goes to G and makes D. And so the overall reaction is A goes to D. But these are the steps that, ha that happen. Here's another one, and this is an organic reaction. We have this, this thing that happens right here. And then we go here, and then here, and then here, and then finally here. So which one is the slow step? Well, the slow step is the one that requires the most activation energy. So if you had to look at this, this one over here in the top right-hand corner, which one is the slow step? Step one, step two, or step three? Go to the top right. Step two. Why? Because it has the greatest activation energy. Just like over here, the rate determining step right here had the greatest activation energy. It's going to require the most energy to do. 
here, it's this one right here. This is the slow step right here, going from four to five. So you've got one, two, three, four steps going on here. Now, once again, in the past, we have only been concerned about the things on either side of these two lines, this and this. We've not been concerned about anything in the middle. Kinetics concerns itself with the middle. Okay, AP problems. Sorry about the bell. This is what you will see, 1999 number three. 2NO plus BR2 yields 2NOBR was found experimentally to have a rate of this. Here's the rate, okay? The following mechanism was proposed for the reaction. Okay, here's the slow step. BR2 plus NO yields NOBR2, and then NOBR2 plus NO yields 2NOBR, and that's the fast step. Is this mechanism consistent with the given experimental observations? Justify your answer. Does it fulfill all the requirements? So let's first look at the, the elementary steps. First of all, the first step we need to think about, does it add up? So NOBR2 goes away, that's true, and we get uh, 2NO plus BR2 yields 2NOBR. Sorry, my pen is being stupid today, okay? Making lots of lines it shouldn't. So that's, that's the case. It adds up to the overall reaction that we need, yes? Okay, then we look at the rate mechanisms. So the rate mechanism for this one would be the rate is equal to K um, BR NO. So this would be second order. This one would be rate is equal to K NO BR 2 NO. Talk to me about that. Which one should match the experimentally determined rate law? The top one. Does it match? No. So is this mechanism consistent? No. Why? Because the slowest step rate law does not match that of the experimentally determined rate law, even though the overall reaction adds up. And that's the answer, literally. Okay, let's try another one. Consider the reaction. O3 plus NO yields O2 plus NO2. Here's the rate law that was experimentally determined. So the overall reaction is given first. The experimentally determined rate law is given second. The following three step mechanism is proposed for the reaction. Identify the step that must be the slowest and explain. So I'll give you a minute to think about that. What do you think, Thomas? Why? Right, it's proposed rate would be the same as the experimentally determined rate, so therefore we would say step one is probably the slowest. Okay? 2002, number seven, the proposed mechanism for the depletion of O3 in the upper atmosphere is as shown. We're given a mechanism. Write a balanced equation for the overall reaction represented by step one and step two. What are we gonna do? Add them together. Does anything cancel out? Okay, so the CLs cancel out. The CLOs cancel out. So we get O3 plus O yields 2O2. Yes? Identify the catalyst. CL is the catalyst, okay? CL is used up here to create that, but then it comes back down here in step two. We see it back again in step two, and that's the justification. Clearly identify the intermediate in the mechanism above. Remember what an intermediate is, CLO. CLO is created in step one, but used up completely in step two and doesn't show up in the overall reaction. 
If the rate law for the elevator action can be found to be with the rate uh, in this, da, 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 here's the rate law. Here's the experiment to determine rate law. What's the overall order of the reaction? Two. What's the appropriate unit for the rate constant? So remember, we need molarity per, liter, per second, and it has to equal K times molarity squared. 1 over ms, right? So 1 over molarity. Now, I want you to understand, what does that mean? This means the same thing as saying liters over moles times seconds. Because remember, molarity, m, big M, is moles per liter. And that's what they will probably give you on the test. So the appropriate unit for K constant is one over, or I'm going to, I'm going to put liter over moles times seconds. The rate determining step for the reaction to justify. Number one, why? That elementary step gives you the rate law. The stoichiometry of that elementary step gives you the rate law. That's that easy, guys. Okay, what is the rate law for the following elementary reaction? Which one is correct? This is an elementary step. It should be D. Okay, this is an elementary step. Okay, what's the slowest step in a reaction mechanism called? The rate determining step. And an overall reaction, N and 2 plus CO, da, 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 there is a slow step followed by a fast step. But the slow step is NO2 plus NO2 equals NO plus NO3, and the fast step is NO3 plus CO yields NO2 plus CO2. What is the rate of the total reaction? The slow step is the first step. B. Very good. Okay, consider the following two-step reaction mechanism. First step is A goes to B, slow, and the second one is B plus C go to 2D, and it's fast. If we simplify using the steady state approximation, what is the overall rate law? Okay, we're just using an approximation. It would be D. That's a hard one. Okay. Steady state approximation just means that we're going to keep things the same. And so because C is not showing up, it's not a, it's not a catalyst. So C has to be included there. And then we're going to take, notice C is going to cancel out. Do you see this down here? C will, C will eventually cancel out in part of it right there because of the 2KC. Okay. You will not have to do steady state approximations. Okay, all of the following are appropriate methods to measure a reaction experimentally, except, so all of these answers are correct. Monitoring the change in pressure at a constant volume, measuring the change in absorption spectrum, extracting a sample from the reaction mixture. What do you think? If we wanted to determine something experimentally, change in pressure at constant volume, Measuring the change in absorption spectrum, extracting a sample from a reaction mixture. It would technically be all of them. Okay? Technically, it would be all of them. That is it, young people.